Hey guys, in this video we'll focus on direct and indirect taxes. Now we know that the government, to conduct budgetary policy, needs to spend money or inject money into the economy because budgetary policy by nature is an aggregate demand management policy. But to spend money, the government needs to make revenue. And in this lecture, we're going to focus on the two main sources of revenue that the government has, uh, which include Direct taxation, direct taxation, and indirect taxation. So in this lecture, we'll just focus on these two types of taxation, and we're going to go through uh, several different types of these taxation as examples of how government can tax to make revenue. Okay, so we're going to focus firstly on direct taxation. We're going to define what direct taxation actually is. So direct taxation is tax that is levied that is levied as a proportion of income. And this can be received either by companies or individuals. So by individuals Individuals or companies. So the most common form of direct taxation that we know is what is called the personal income tax. And the personal income tax is a direct paid direct tax paid by individuals who earn incomes in the forms of wages, salaries, rent, interest, and dividends. So this is also known as PAYG tax or pay as you go tax. And what this means is that for most people, income tax is firstly deducted from your pay packets before you actually receive your income. So, for example, if you earn $1,000 a week, you'll possibly get around $200 deducted from your income before you, before you actually receive your income. So, at the end of the week, say your employer transfers should transfer a thousand dollars into your, into your bank account instead they would transfer eight hundred dollars into your bank account and then pay the government two hundred dollars as a direct income taxation however there is a tax-free threshold of eighteen thousand two hundred dollars so what this means is that if you earn less than eighteen thousand two hundred dollars you are exempt from paying tax so even though your employees would still pay as you go even though they will still pay, say, $200 out of every $1,000 as taxation, if by the end of the financial year you earn less than $18,200, you are able to file a tax claim and reclaim any tax or any tax paid on income less than $18,200. So that's the first form of taxation. The second most common form of taxation is what is known as the Medicare levy. And this is a direct tax designed to provide public health care. So we know that some people may not, may not be able to afford private health care, but health is generally a necessity in, in our society. So what this means is the government taxes people, and this is usually levied around 1.5% of personal taxable incomes, so it's around 1.5%. So the government taxes around 1.5% of taxable income and then they use this money to provide a public health system. And so that sort of, in a way, helps uh, maximise people's living standards. So these are all individual taxes. Now we come to company taxation. And company taxation is a flat or proportional tax rate. And this is around 30% of profits. So when company report records profits, they are obliged to pay 30% of these profits in tax. And this is known as a flat tax. Because it doesn't matter how high your profits are, you only pay 30% of, of your profits. This is opposed to income taxation where it is actually a progressive tax. So we just got to note this is a progressive tax. 
So what this means is that as your income increases, you're going to pay a higher proportion of your income in taxation. So now the final major tax is called the MRRT, or what is known as the Mineral Resource Red Tax. So the Mineral Resources Rent Tax. And so what this is, is that it is proposed at a 30% direct tax on mining company profits above the average rate. So it is 30% profits above normal return. And what the government aimed to do here, and this is a fairly new tax that they, that they introduced, is to take advantage of the mining boom. So because we know that China has such high demand for our minerals, mining, mining companies are making irregular or abnormal profits. And so what this means is that they, they, the, the companies or uh, the Australian government aims to try to uh, take advantage of these abnormal profits. And at the same time, because these mines are mining non-renewable energy sources, they're going to try to discourage them from mining so much and therefore uh, keep Australia's growth sustainable in the long term. So even though these natural resources contribute uh, very much so to the, uh, to the current living standards of these mines or these mining companies, the MRR, MRRT tax or the mineral, mineral resources rent tax, a bit of a tongue twister there, the mineral resources rent tax aims to uh, preserve the future benefit or preserve the economic benefit and economic well-being of current and future generations. However, this tax has since proved a little bit unsuccessful because they didn't actually reach the, the goal revenue or the target revenue that they expected to gain from the mineral resources rent tax. Okay, so they're, they're the four major types of direct taxation revenue that the government uh, gets from companies and individuals. Indirect taxes, they're, they're a little bit more complicated. So an indirect taxes are added taxation onto the price onto the price of a good or service. So this is this is just going to make the good or service more expensive, and we can we can look at this in terms of a supply and demand graph. So we have price, and we have quantity, and we have an upward slope in supply and a downward slope in demand. Now, as you can see, the equilibrium price is at P1 here, and an equilibrium quantity without government intervention is at Q1 there. But with taxation, say the tax is this much, they're going to tax companies that much. The price that the sellers are selling it at is at P dash, and the price that the buyers are purchasing at is at P star. So, as you can see, the difference between P star minus P dash equals the indirect tax. And so that means that the overall quantity produced has decreased. And so in most cases, the government adds indirect taxation on goods with where uh, the demand is relatively inelastic or to goods where uh, they are socially undesirable to produce this quantity at Q1 here. So they would rather produce these goods at a quantity of Q2, so e.g. cigarettes, because they have negative externalities attached to them. So the social optimal amount is at Q2 as opposed to Q1. And we've gone through um, indirect taxation on, on, on our microeconomic side of these lectures, and if you want further in-depth analysis on how indirect taxation can affect demand, you can move on to indirect taxation as part of the microeconomics part of this course. But now we're just going to look at different types of indirect taxation. So firstly we have what is known as excise duty.
So this is an indirect tax imposed on selected locally produced goods such as coal, petrol, LPG, beer, spirits, wine, and tobacco. So these are all, uh, this is a flat amount. And because these are all uh, relatively undesirable, social, socially undesirable goods, the government aims to minimise the production and the consumption of these because of the next negative externalities involved. Secondly, we have custom, customs duties, or commonly referred to as tariffs. And what the government does here is that it aims to protect local businesses from uh, international competitors and so because internationally they are more efficient by adding a tax onto imports or uh, custom duties this means that they uh, the imports become relatively more expensive compared to domestic goods and therefore people will be more inclined to produce or consume domestic goods and this would help uh, both our external stability and the achievement of full employment. And lastly, we have the common GST or goods and services tax. And this comes up, pops up uh, in most shopping, uh, shopping, shopping markets everywhere. The goods and services tax, and this was introduced in uh, July 2000 and replaced the wholesale sales, wholesale sales tax, uh, and it is. A broad-based indirect tax levy at a rate of around 10%. So this is around 10%, and that is collected by the federal government on behalf of the state and territories. So GST revenues are not included in the federal budget, but GST does help government uh, gather taxation revenue as part of um, its help is planned to help state and territory governments. So there, the different types of indirect taxation. So now we know the difference between direct taxation and indirect taxes, taxation. One is levied as a proportion of their income, so it's taken directly from the incomes of individuals and companies, whereas the other one is added onto the price of a good or service.